This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. Grace is the hand of God in life. Yes, there is a hand of God in life. The first hurdle in recognizing grace is recognizing that there is a hand of God in life. There is grace. There is so much grace in life that it permeates everything. There isn't a creation that isn't moved by grace. There isn't an event that doesn't have grace behind it. Even events that you might call ego-driven, grace is allowing these events to happen. So there is grace causing things to happen, and there is grace allowing things to happen, according to one's free will. This will is essentially the will of the ego, the false self, for there is no other will besides thy will except the ego's will. Everything else is thy will. Everything else is grace. You could say that grace is thy will, but grace is more than will or intention. It is the actual movement of God in life. I say the hand of God because hands move, don't they? Hands affect life. Hands manipulate life. They push, they pull, they shape, and they create. So it is with the hand of God, with grace. It shapes, it manipulates, and of course it does allow. Grace is either acting in life or standing back and allowing the false self, driven by the ego, to act and have its experience and make its choices and experience the results of those choices. Always there is a dance going on between thy will or grace and the ego's or false self's will and what it chooses to do, what it chooses to create, and how it chooses to use its energy and will. This makes life interesting. There is both a false self that is moved through life based on programming, including the ego, which itself is programming, and then there is life itself moving its creations in life. This makes life more interesting, doesn't it? The hand of God is moving in life, and it is much more interesting for the hand of God to move in a world where there is free will, free choice, where there is pushback, you could say, where there is something else choosing. And yet, ultimately, it is the hand of God that shapes life. Ultimately, the hand of God has its way with life. The only thing that you, as a false self or ego, are able to accomplish is what this hand of God allows you to accomplish. If it were not for that, you could accomplish nothing. In fact, often when you fail to accomplish what you'd like to, it's because you're not being allowed to accomplish it. Not because you aren't working hard enough or not thinking the right thoughts or willing it adequately. You're simply not allowed to have what you want all the time. What is this that doesn't allow you to have what you want? It is grace. You hardly think that grace would be something that gets in your way. You think of grace as a positive force, as a helping hand. But sometimes grace stops you. It halts you. It holds its hand up and says, No, stop. You can't go this way. You can't have this. Even that is grace. Even that is the most beautiful, loving hand of God, doing the wisest and most loving thing it can do for you. Whatever happens in life is the hand of grace. It is either the hand of grace helping you along, providing you with opportunities, ideas, inspiration, and other people who help you, or it's the hand that stops you from going in a direction that would not be supportive of your overall growth or of benefit to the whole. Because grace, this hand of God, 
is functioning for the whole, of which you are a part. You are a cog in the wheel in the cosmos, and the cogs must work a certain way for the universe to function properly. This hand of God is the grease that greases the wheels, and it also makes sure the wheels stay on their tracks so that they do their proper job, play their proper role, and hold their proper place in the universe. So, you see, you are very important. Just as a cog in the machine can take the entire machine down, your missteps or going off the plan can keep the whole from functioning as it's meant to and evolving in the direction it's meant to. So sometimes it's necessary for grace to stop people from going in a certain direction or from making certain choices or to prevent the fruits of those choices from working out. This is a very big job that Grace has, a very big job indeed. It is an unimaginable intelligence that is operating behind the scenes here. This hand of God, the God whose hand this is, it is an unimaginable intelligence. And it is a benevolent one. Grace is benevolent. Even when it appears to not be benevolent, it is most benevolent. It is absolutely benevolent. It is unceasingly benevolent. It can be nothing but benevolent. This is very good news. The universe, the creation, the cosmos, all of creation, of which you are an eternal part, is benevolent. Absolutely and completely benevolent. Anything that appears otherwise is nothing that is actually shaping life, that has any real power in life. It is only being allowed to act for the time being. Any so-called evil that exists is being allowed by grace because it is part of the evolution for those involved in this evil. They are evolving as they need to, to be the appropriate cog in this wheel of the cosmos. There is a learning, an adjusting, and an experimentation that goes on with people before they fall in line and discover their purpose, discover grace, and discover that they wish to align with grace. Before that, their free will takes them in all sorts of directions, and this is allowed, for the time being, not forever. Built into creation is a natural learning to align with grace, with love, with the benevolence behind all life. Everyone eventually learns this, and that too is grace. Built into creation is a learning to function from love. You all eventually learn to function from love. This is great grace. Grace teaches you to love, and it sometimes teaches through pain. Pain you created through choices that caused pain. Suffering you created by believing mistaken beliefs and by going in directions that were hurtful to yourself or others. Grace allows you to make these mistakes so that you never make them again. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? You only have to make these mistakes a few times, and then you're done with them forevermore. Your eternal self will always remember to go in the direction of love. This will never be forgotten once it's learned. You are all very, very blessed by this hand of God, very blessed by grace. Grace is taking care of each and every one of you perfectly. It is perfectly standing by you and giving you everything you need to evolve to the next step and then the next and the next. Grace never leaves your side. It never gets weary. It is always patient, always loving, always compassionate. In this way, it teaches you to be loving, to be patient, to be compassionate. Once you discover that grace is behind life, 
everything changes. You can evolve much more quickly, much more happily, and much more safely, too, because the only lack of safety you perceive in life is caused by your own egoic perceptions, your belief that life is not taking care of you or won't take care of you properly. That is a lie. It is a misperception, a misunderstanding, an inability to see the hand of God in your life. Once you recognize that hand, you realize that you have always been safe, you have always been taken care of, and that life has, time and time again, picked you up off the ground and dusted you off and sent you on your way. You may not have liked falling down. You may not even like the direction you are sent in. But to see it this way is a misperception. To see falling down as a problem or as something that shouldn't have happened, or to see change or going in a new direction as something undesirable. That is your own internal, attitudinal problem, and not a real problem. Life is always wise in how it delivers its lessons and picks you up and gives you a new life in place of the old one. Life is unbelievably wise and compassionate. It knows exactly what you need, and it gives you exactly what you need. It might give you a lesson, which you might not like. It might give you a challenge, which you also might not like. It might give you a gift, which you will undoubtedly like, or maybe you won't like that either. But your liking or not liking what life is delivering is, in a sense, your problem, your self-creation. If your attitude were different, you would not experience a difficulty, a change, a challenge, and certainly not a gift as a problem. The egoic self experiences much of life as undesirable and a problem. Every step, every turn it takes, it has difficulty with. The ego argues with life. It doesn't like it. It chooses to perceive life as it is unfolding, as problematic, as undesirable, as something it doesn't like or want. Well, that is the ego's problem. The ego generates the problem of not liking life. Life is not unlikable. In its essence, life is perfect and lovable and wise, and you are here to discover that. You are here to discover the perfection of the life you are living and the life that everyone is given. It is hard for your ego to see the perfection, but you have to learn to see this. That is the work here on this plane of existence. That is the learning here, to see the perfection, to see that life is good, to see that grace is infusing everything. There isn't a moment, a second, that isn't infused with grace, care, protection, and love from this benevolent intelligence that is guiding all of it. Grace is everywhere. Grace is eternal. Grace has been everywhere, will be everywhere, and cannot be anything but infusing every single moment of life because the very nature of life is goodness. Everything this life force does in relation to its creation, in relation to itself, is ultimately good, whether that's recognized or not. The only thing that doesn't recognize life as good would be the programming, the ego, the misperceptions of the false self. Once these misperceptions are seen through, then you begin to love life. You begin to accept it. You begin to grow with it, align with it, flow with it. Then you can be in the flow and love life and enjoy it just the way it is, with nothing needing to be changed, nothing out of place, nothing wrong, everything just so just as it is, just as it is meant to be. 
When I say that life is perfect just as it is, this doesn't mean that life is predetermined. There are many ways that this perfection can unfold, and the intelligence behind life doesn't know exactly how life will unfold in this plane of existence, or in other planes for that matter. Life is free-flowing, and there are multiple possibilities, infinite possibilities, for how anything can play out, based on what individuals might choose, and the choices that are allowed, and the choices that are stopped. The shaping of this hand of grace in coordination with free will creates many, many possibilities that are always changing and unpredictable. Hence, there are many, many possible alternative universes in which every possible choice and every possible imagination is actually being lived out. This is a great enjoyment for the intelligence. Behind each and every possible universe, each and every possible dimension, there is love and there is benevolence. There is no such thing as a universe that does not have benevolence behind it. It may appear that a universe does not because it's so drenched in egoic negativity, but that is only temporary because even those universes are evolving toward greater goodness, greater peace, and greater love. There is no such thing as hell. There are temporary places that are hellish. The individuals in those places are learning love, just as you are. It's no different there, only worse. So, dear ones, you are being taken care of. You are always loved, and you are always guided. Your lives are perfectly shaped by a higher intelligence that knows exactly what you need to evolve to the next stage. You get to choose, to some extent, how you do that and what you experience. But ultimately, the deeper plan, the blueprint, is not in your hands, but in the hands of God. You are the beloved sons and daughters of this great intelligence. You are this great intelligence made manifest as men and women and children and as every single creature. But you are very special because you do have free will. You are sentient in a way that other creations are not, and there is a certain responsibility that goes with that. So choose wisely, dear ones. Know that you are being encouraged in every moment to choose wisely and that you are being given answers that will lead you to greater fulfillment if you only listen. So please do try to tune in to this hand of grace which is operating in every moment of your life. <laughs> 